Hey everybody, welcome to the Life Size City YouTube channel. I'm Michael Koval Anderson, urban designer and author. So I've launched a website and a project, a research project called Kid Sized Cities. And I'm going to link to it, obviously, down in the description so you can check it out. It's a simple website for kids between 6 and 12 years old. What we're trying to do is get kids to sign up for this 20 question survey. There have been many examples through my work over the past decade or so where I have engaged the brilliant minds of the ultimate experts in our cities. The kids have this logic and rationality that we have lost as adults. And when you tap into that and you ask them questions about their cities and what ideas they have to make them better, they deliver nugget of wisdom after nugget of wisdom. It really just blows my mind every single time. I often say that uh, almost everything important that I've learned about urbanism and my work as an urban designer, I've learned from kids. They're not you know, encumbered by years of academia. They just think straight and fresh and they love answering the questions. I wanted to try and figure out how to sort of tap in to this inherent logic and rationality of kids all over the world. And I'm going to try and put all of this together once I get enough respondents uh, to the survey and try to figure out if there is a pattern. Do kids who grow up in a densely populated neighborhood have a different set of answers to the 20 questions? Kids who live in a, a suburb uh, outside of a big city, you know, maybe a place with no sidewalks or whatever, do they think differently about how their neighborhood, their city, their town should be further developed? I don't know. That's what I want to find out. If you click on take the survey, well, then you're going to hop into the 20 questions. Only do that if you're a kid between 6 and 12 years old. Uh, have a look at it, sure. But then you can just hop over into the play section where we've developed three interactive tools. The first one is just called the Safer Intersection Challenge, a generic car-centric intersection, something we see in most cities on the planet still today. And the job for the kids here is just to make the intersection safer for pedestrians and cyclists. You don't give them a whole long spiel, a yada yada about urban planning and oh, and you just tell them straight, hey, make this intersection safer for pedestrians and cyclists. Kids will just look at that going, huh, okay. We can talk about it with them afterwards when they're done and uh, that, that's great. But we just get right to the case. We've had a load of test kids having a look at this while we were developing it here during the corona crisis, uh, the perfect corona solution for stuff to do for me and my friends, but also perfect for parents uh, around the world who have had their kids at home. So the kids will look at that saying, okay, safer, great, you know, and uh, they'll use their own intuitive uh, ideas and maybe we're gonna, oh, we're just gonna put in some more sidewalks there and we're gonna widen the sidewalks. And there are little gentle tips about what these different elements do. Uh, there's also the opportunity to, uh, you know, make an entire intersection funky and painted with different paint. Uh, we have people and cyclists to put in. We can start putting in uh, bike lanes as well. And uh, also having a look at seeing how kids design bike lanes. Are they intuitive in their thought process there? Uh, or are they influenced by the kind of bike infrastructure they have in their city or lack thereof. So maybe it's a completely new thing for them. Oh my God, separated space for cyclists? Weird, but of course it makes sense. You know, however they're going to think. Um, bike racks, we have the public seating. You can put out benches for people to sit on and have a view of the city. Uh, we have also cars. You can put some cars through there if you want to keep a car lane. Tramways. We have tramways if you want to just slide a tramway right through the city there. Boom. Like that. Who knows what you want to do? Add the tram like that. Put in some bus lanes. Put in public seating. You can place the cyclists and the pedestrians on the infrastructure that you've created for them. You can make curb bump outs to make the crossing time shorter and safer for pedestrians. Whatever. We don't tell the kids all of these details. We just let them try and figure it out. And just from the test kids that we've had in about four countries around the world, it's so interesting already to see the way that they think. They just want to keep creating and they restart. They save and then restart and reset and, and, and start designing another intersection to see how that would look. Already there are some patterns emerging just from the test kids. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen once we blow this up and uh, we get a lot of kids from all over the world, all different cultures and different kinds of cities and towns to start putting all of their ideas into the big basket for us to analyze later. 
And you go up here and you know the next little task is simply capacity, right? A typical car centric street, four lanes of traffic, parking on either side and a strip of sidewalk. The question for the kids here is how do we move more people down this street more effectively? I like just slapping down trams right down the middle there and I like to put grass in. There, boom. All the way through there, just like so many cities are doing around the world, putting back in their tramways that we all took out in so many cities uh, decades ago because we all just copy pasted American traffic standards from the 1940s into our cities. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Click, click, copy, paste. And uh, here we are today suffering the consequences still. Uh, the last little interactive feature is be the traffic jam terminator. It's car centric intersection uh, in an anonymous city and we want to see how they're going to fix congestion. The kids and the elderly, man, nobody ever asks them questions. We just assume that we're designing the city for everybody in the middle, the working, the working people, the, the people with money. And there's these two you know, age wings on either side of that who are quite often neglected. And if we're serious about democratic design in our cities, it's time that we start asking absolutely everybody and weighing all of the opinions equally. Now, there are other websites out there with similar interactive tools for designing streets. Some of them are cool. I wanted to design my own in order to focus specifically on the 6 to 12 demographic and, and really try to zoom in on them and the way that they think. So if you have kids, if you know people with kids, if you know teachers with school classes, spread the word about kid-sized cities. And let's try and get as many kids as possible to fill out the survey so that we can start harvesting the brilliant knowledge and vision of the ultimate experts in our cities, the kids. Thanks very much. See you next time.